Hey everybody, welcome to Lamb Living. My name is Holly Lamb and today we're going to be happy and make bee decor. So fun for spring. I'm going to use this Walmart reusable bag and this Dollar Tree 18 inch wreath form to make uh, a bee unbeareathable wreath for the unbeareathable wreath unbeareathable DIY challenge hosted by C from CJ DIY, Jackie from Crafting in Mimi's World, and Christine from the DIY Craftaholic. We are going to be, I'm going to make four bee themed uh, spring ideas for you today and projects. And this one is going to start off with my seam ripper. And we'll see that seam ripper again in just a little while. Uh, but this bag was almost perfectly 18 inch with a quarter inch seam allowance on uh, all sides. And uh, it just stretched so perfectly onto this 18 inch uh, wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm kind of with my hot glue gun, um, I'm going to be covering this like I would a dining room chair over um, foam. I'm going to do every side, one side at a time, then I'm going to go to the other side, and then I will do the diagonals. And so that everything is nice and pulled uh, straight and smooth and not twisted, and my be happy is smack dab in the middle because this bag is a beautiful uh, round shape anyway, the design is, with great colors and beautiful spring uh, motifs. Now, I'm gonna use my scissors to cut little notches, and those notches are gonna help me to make the circular form out of this bag. And I tell you what, I was trying to be very careful. My Sure Bonder is not a, a, a light glue gun. It is a, a hot glue gun and it does not have a lower temperature setting. So I was trying to be very careful and not melt through this plastic, but it, it honestly, nothing budged this plastic. It was good and solid. Now that little spot looked a little bit short, so I'm going to sure it up just a hair with an extra piece of the bag that I cut off and look how cute. Now, of course, these bags are two-sided. All of them are. I think these from Walmart are about $1.57, something like that. Um, so they're a little bit more than the Dollar Tree bags. But they are so nice because, uh, if you saw there at the beginning, the uh, fold is in the bottom and on the ribs. And so you have two beautiful designs on each side. And there's no big uh, you know, fold down one of the designs. So on the opposite side, I'm going to cut out the other E to make our B-E-E -E for our Bs. So it will be happy for our Bs. And then I did cut out a few more of the flowers on the opposite side. I thought I might fill in some of this wreath with some of those, but I decided against it. I decided it was just beautiful as is and that I was just going to cut out the E. I kind of fussy cut it a little bit there and then I hot glued it onto the bag with um, two sets. So I did the skinny part first and then I hot glued the bigger part and it glued down beautifully, nice and flat. Now I'm gonna take this plaster chalk paint by Waverly and put um, equal parts water and chalk paint and do a whitewash like I like to do. I like things to look nice and kind of matte and frosted. So I'm gonna wipe off most of it and you can see a little bit of that white sheen there. It's still got a little bit of the bag shininess, but the uh, top coat's going to take care of that and make it nice and matte. Now, the second side, I'm also going to be using the uh, handle. The other handle, I pulled all the seams out of, so it was just loose. But this one was still on the, the plastic of the bag, and I thought that would give it some, some form and give it some strength. So I'm just going to hot glue that to the back and trim off the edges just right there on the wreath form. And now this Rust-Oleum Chalk Top Coat, it's a matte top coat, and I use this all the time. It's great to take away any shininess from um, Mod Podge or anything that has a little bit of a shiny sheen. This chalked um, top coat takes care of that and makes it nice and matte. All right, these amaranthus are from the Dollar Tree. I got them a couple of weeks ago. They're in the spring line, but they've been at the Dollar Tree for years. You probably have some in your flower stash. And actually, I had to go back upstairs 
and look for this set. They're a little bit different. They still were called amaranthus, but they're a little bit thinner, same color, but I ran out of yellow. So I went up and dug in my uh, flowers upstairs in my craft room, and I found these in the bottom, but they also had an off-white, which was the perfect background color to go along with my uh, bag, with my wreath now. And so what I did is I hot glued the ends all the way around, almost like making a sun shape. And then I'm going to weave them all together to make our little circumference around the wreath. And each frond of this amaranthus gets folded over top and glued, folded over top. And I honestly didn't have to glue all of them because they were, they were woven right into that wreath and oh, look how cute but I'm not quite finished I've got a couple more steps on this beautiful unbe-wreathable wreath I'm gonna use this Easter grass from the Dollar Tree they have they come in all kinds of colors but this yellow really caught my eye when I was thinking about the bee themes and um, I'm just gonna take a chunk of it now when you get it out of the package it's not you find it's not really paper it's like a, 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 a plastic very similar to the bag and so I took it in sections um, and I used all of the bag and I folded it into thirds, made two thirds of it the bow uh, part where it's like folded. And then the other third is gonna hang down nice and willy nilly and natural looking. And then I'm gonna take another little piece and wrap it through the middle. And I'm doing all this with just zip ties I think I used four zip ties in total because I put an extra one in the back on that middle zip tie because that's what I'm going to use to hang this by on the door. I'm going to use a command strip, just a little one, because this I'm going to hang this separate from the wreath. I'm not going to glue this to the wreath because I might want to change it someday. So I'm just going to put another command strip right under the wreath and hang it by the zip tie that I put on the back. And there it goes. Just hanging there so nice and I've got one more step to put on this be happy wreath for my front door and that I found at Hobby Lobby every other week the buttons go on half off and so when they're on 50% off I pick up a few and this one is a little jeweled bee there it is because otherwise this didn't have a bee theme to it we made it a bee theme decor and there's my pretty uh, Easter grass ribbon and bow with all those pretty florals and our cute little jeweled bee there with the extra E that we glued on there. And I love how this looks. All right, so now my foyer table needed a little gnome. You know, every, every house does. We need something fun and kitschy. So I got these flags from the Dollar Tree and I was gonna decide between the two. Of course, the welcome gnome with the little gnome with the hive hat on, it won out all day long. So I'll save that beautiful um, flower pot. I guess it's a like a watering can maybe, uh, or a pitcher full of flowers. It had butterflies on it, not bees. So this one had to be for the bee theme challenge. And I'm gonna cut out, all my Dollar Tree signs were too small. And so I, we got a new comforter and inside the packaging for the comforter for our bed came this big piece of cardboard. And so I'm just gonna use my box cutter from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut it to fit so that I have a little bit, almost like a quarter inch seam allowance, just like our wreath. Um, and it can wrap around, my little flag, my little gnome flag can wrap around this cardboard. And I doubled it up and then I gl hot glued it together. You can see I'm going to add lots of hot glue here and make sure it's all lined up. And so this is gonna be super stiff and strong. And then we're going to paint it and then Mod Podge that flag on. You can see Toby there in the corner. We're outside on the deck enjoying a pretty day. And there we go. Uh, I use a lot of that Waverly plaster. That's probably my favorite Waverly color. And it's so versatile. It's just a nice, e easy off-white and uh, makes everything so pretty. And so I'm gonna give that uh, one thick coat. You can use latex paint or you can use um, acrylic paint on that if you want, it's just a background because we know that when we decoupage anything, a light background is gonna make the, are gonna make the colors pop. 
So I'm the seam rubbers back out and uh, we're going to take all of those white stitching white uh, threads out of the hem and the edges of this flag. And so I just use my seam ripper and my exacto knife and you just uh, uh, seam rip a couple of those uh, threads and then they all just come out. So there's the one with the seam and no seam. Very nice. So there's our nice plaster painted piece of cardboard. And then I'm going to take my Matte Mod Podge. I have that big old bottle now. And I'm going to, I got that at Walmart. That was the best deal was to get the big bottle. And since I use so much of it, it seemed only right. So now I'm making sure that I've got a little bit, it's all lined up nice and straight. And there's already Mod Podge down and you can kind of see the Mod Podge seeping through the fabric there of our darling little flag. And so I'm going to go ahead and cover the whole thing. I'm making sure there's no wrinkles and it's straight because you can still move it uh, before it dries. Um, but there I give it a nice coat and it looks like it's always going to be that white finish. But no, it dries so pretty. This fabric is kind of a nylon fabric and so that Mod Podge just makes it look super pretty. And so we're just going to hot glue the top, our little hem and our seam allowance that I left. And look how pretty that turned out with the Mod Podge. It's all nice and dry and stiff. And then I'm going to you do the corners, hard to see there, just like I wrap a present. Do a little, a little fold and hot glue all the edges and there it is. He looks so nice and shiny and pretty for my foyer table. Now here comes the Easter grass again. That yellow grass, I wanted it to match the bow on the door. So um, to cover up a little bit more of the cardboard that's still showing, because I doubled up the cardboard so it would be good and stiff, I'm going to twist some of this Easter grass on the edges and then hot glue it. And like I say, this is not paper. It's that um, kind of plastic um, and they have purple, I think they have green, pink, uh, I know they have blue, and of course this yellow, and it just makes for, it's a nice thick, um, Easter grass and makes a real pretty, uh, basket as well. So I'm just going to do a little twist and glue, twist and glue, and leave the ends, all four ends, kind of willy-nilly, and then I'm just going to take my scissors and give it a little haircut, so it just has little puffs and tufts. And he looks darling. Now there are a couple of bees in the print, but I'm gonna use these little craft wood bees. I think there's 16 in this package, if I saw that correctly. But they're darling. Uh, Dollar Tree has wood bees and wood ladybugs this spring in their spring line. And so I'm just gonna kinda, anywhere there was a flaw or I could see the hot glue, I'm gonna cover that up with these little bees. And so they're gonna kinda go hither and nither all on my sign and the foyer is looking so, there we go. There they are with their little white wings. And you can see there's two bees actually on the, the print and my little gnome is looking so springy and cheerful. I put one of the bees on one of his flowers he's holding in his hand. And then we're going to work on these two vases that I have and make those for some Dollar Tree florals on the foyer table as well. So there's one there that the one on the right is um, just a vase I got from someone giving me flowers. It, it might have been the kids from school. It might have been my husband. Uh, you know, you, I keep those all, much to my husband's chagrin. I keep every vase that I get, and uh, we can DIY with that. And so they're going to get three coats of the plaster Waverly chalk paint. And I like to do three coats on those. Oh, and I didn't tell you, this one is from Sam's. This was a on the border um, salsa jar. And so it has that nice top up there that's just screaming for a bow to be put on it. And so after I do, I do those three layers of the chalk paint so that I can use my sanding block and sand off um, any brush strokes that are visible from the chalk paint because it's thick. And then I also want to bring out any of the edges that would naturally distress. This salsa jar had a nice little design there about a third of the way down. And so I'm bringing all that out. It also had some bumps down at the bottom that... Uh, looks so pretty just with a little bit of distressing and I think I'll hold it up here in a second to show you a little bit of the distressing that's just a 
a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. If you ever see those in the hardware aisle, pick up a couple because they're not in there. They're not there right now, and they haven't been for a couple of months since before Christmas. So luckily, I have a couple. But um, if you see them, grab them because those sanding blocks are way better than the sandpaper um, that they sell in the big packs there at the Dollar Tree. I can even get that sand block wet and and wet distress and distress with the sanding block and it will dry and be usable again. So those sanding blocks are really nice to have. All right, so now we're going to put some transfers on these. And anytime you want to put transfers on chalk paint, you A, want the chalk paint to be completely cured and dry, and B, you want to uh, put a top coat. That matte clear that I put on the the bag on the wreath is exactly what I put on those jars. So that Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. Now, these are the exciting pieces. This is from the new IOD release. This spring just happened on uh, Valentine's Day. I got this one. This is Bungalow from IOD, and it is eight pages of beautiful uh, tropical bliss. And so I'm going to cut out a few of the flowers and the bee in the bungalow uh, transfer set. And these are going to match what the, uh, the florals from Dollar Tree and the florals that I put on the door. And so I'm just going to use that tool there. It's like a little plastic uh, rectangle and I'm going to rub that all the way on get it off the vellum you saw me with my scissors cut some notches in that just like I cut notches in the plastic when I wrapped it around a circular um, 18 inch wreath form this is also rounded so when you cut those notches it's going to be a lot easier to get on and you won't break your uh, floral pattern Okay, now for the salsa jar, I'm going to use these uh, redesigned by Prima transfers. This is also new to redesigned by Prima. I ordered these from Amazon. These I can get from Amazon. Now my IOD, you see there's several B, several beautiful little uh, crests and labels in this set. Love that set. It's all black and white. But the IOD transfers and all my IOD products that I get, I get from Deborah down at Cottle and Gun. That's her shop's name down in St. Mary's, Georgia. And so I ordered, we didn't get a chance to go down there this past week on Valentine's Day. So I ordered and she got it to me in two days. I, w I had all my new IOD products in two days. So fast. They're so great down there at Cottle and Gun. And I'll put their um, link in my description box below if you want to check out the, all the IOD products she has. She has tons of them. And you'll want to get some of these new release items quickly because they will sell out. And I was uh, ordering after my husband and I got back from going out to dinner. I was on the computer ordering IOD products because uh, the spring release had just come out. And so now this ribbon, uh, if you, you recognize members mark there, that's from Sam's. And it's 50 yards of ribbon which is will last me for years and uh, I won't have to buy B a ribbon again for a while and look look at the transfers on these faces oh my goodness I just tied a shoelace bow just a simple bow and on that and they look great all right for my last project I'm going to be overdoing or um redoing that stem from the Goodwill bins. And we're going to use this napkin from TJ Maxx, $4.99. I found this beautiful honeycomb napkin the other night. We were out at TJ Maxx, and I found some beautiful spring napkins, and this was one of them. So there are three plies, so I'm here I am taking off the last layer. There we go. And here goes that middle layer. Sometimes it's easy to pull off, sometimes it isn't, but we got it. There we go. And we're just going to use the top. I use those to wipe things up and all kinds of stuff. I do not throw those away. All right, so this is one humongous pick I found in the bins. And I took it outside and I just spray painted it. And you can see where some of it didn't quite get all the white spray paint. But um, that's just going to add character and um, interest to our leaves in on the stairs there in that basket for the stairway. And uh, so I'm going to just take that big bottle of Matte Mod Podge and give it some more use. And here it goes. Tap, tap, tap. I put the middle in first, kind of fold it in half, put the middle in first, and then work my way out. 
and I like to use my fingers. Some people use saran wrap in a little ball, which also works nicely, but as long as my fingers are dry, then I'd rather feel it. And uh, then I come back and put a little bit of Mod Podge on top. And I do all of the leaves that are kind of on top and looking up. And then some of them that were underneath those leaves, I just pulled off and did them separately. And so I'm going to show you how I cut that out. I did not sand that napkin off. I cut it off in like a heart shape because it kind of mimicked the, the shape of that particular leaf. Now this is the back of the leaves. Some of the spray paint got a little bit of overspray on the back and I really wanted it to be green. So I'm using this Waverly chalk paint. This is celery and I get all my Waverly chalk paints at Walmart. And so I like this celery. It's a real pretty light green, kind of a sagey green. Um, and th then I go ahead and get any others that were still on. This is the back of the, the pick. You can see it's one humongous pick. And um, if it was just green and it didn't get any overspray from the spray paint, I left it alone. I like that light bright green. But you can see the underside of some of those leaves or that celery chalk paint, beautiful. I put some of those amaranthus in there. I also put some other um, Dollar Tree florals, some Queen Anne's lace and other things I had up in my stash, just in the cream and the, wi and the white and yellow and oh, I just love how this looks so pretty. So pretty. I want to thank C, Sweet C from CJ DIY and Jackie from Crafting in Mimi's World and my friend Christine from the DIY Craftaholic for this great challenge. How fun for spring. I hope you'll bring some bees into your life. Save the bees. Save the dandelions. Let them, let them pollinate the world. They are our pollinators. And there's my pretty yellow door that I get for one more week. Uh, the new door is supposed to be coming in, so it looks so pretty on my yellow door, but it'll also look pretty on my black door that comes in. I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Please check out that playlist below. And from the blue house on the corner with a B on the door, I'll see you next time. God bless.